They say I'm up to the world place the truth. But I'm just too long in the tooth. So I'm an OAP and we need. But I'm not yet quite gone to see. I may be over the hill now that I have retired. Fading away, but I'm not yet expired. Blacked out, run down, two of the same. One foot in the grave. So, up mine too, we have Patrick. Good evening to you, Patrick. And what's your question for Mimsy Berkovitz? Well, it's a bit of a tricky one, but uh, put simply, my wife and I live next door to a madman. <laughs> if I tell you a few weeks ago, he put a specially trained crab up my shorts when I was asleep in the garden, and that I had to be rushed to hospital with it hanging between my legs. <laughs> as a passenger on a tube train, uh, you'll get some idea of the problem. What's tricky is that uh, they've invited us around to their house tomorrow for a meal to try and patch things up. I just wonder if we should risk it. It does sound a delicate one, this. But I think on balance, I would. Something wrong with this phone? Oh, sorry, yes. It only takes incoming calls at the moment. They were supposed to have fixed this before. Is everything all right, Jean? You've been really fidgety all night. Margaret, do you mind if we go and sit down? Why, whatever is it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly bring myself to even talk about it. I think Chris is having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> an affair? Who is? Well, you know the woman who lives two doors along from us? Lost her husband in that ear syringing accident. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago, this blew off her washing line and into my garden. You see, where all this, the, the, the colour's been bleached out of the stripes down here, at the bottom. Yes, but what's that got? Acne gel. Sorry? Yes. It's what Chris puts on the back of his neck every night. The stripes on his shirt collars are exactly the same. Gene, you can't be serious. His head's been on this pillow, Margaret. I know it has. <laughs> <laughs> I know you just think I'm being melodramatic and everything. Well, perhaps we'll soon have some proof. I've hired a private detective to follow him about, see if they go anywhere together. I've got to find out Margaret one way or the other. If I did find out, he'd be... I don't know what I'd do. I think I, I just might kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> spam, spam, big pizza spam. That's very, very funny. <laughs> I, I know, Jean, but you can't just. Well, why don't you phone the conference hotel and put your mind at rest? We could meet up for some lunch. <laughs> but I've got a bit of a hectic day tomorrow. Well, Patrick and Pippa are coming in the evening. And Victor's got his conjurer's group meeting here at half past. Oh, God knows, Jean. They all go round each other's houses once a week and fish a hanky out of a hat. <laughs> Cross between the magic circle and Dad's army. Yes, yes, all right, I will. And do try to stop fretting. Yes. Okay, bye. Are you coming to bed tonight or what? Remember, you've got a job to go to tomorrow morning. I'll be up in time for work. I just want to test this over tomorrow, make sure it's in working order. Utterly pathetic. <laughs> oh, I trust that one with the gammy elbow isn't going to start sawing himself in half again this time. Mr. Henstridge, I'm not sure if he's coming. He had a bit of a heart scare last week. Thought we'd never get the stains out. It's a good job we've got a red carpet, is all I can say. <laughs> What's happened there? That's not supposed to do that. I don't believe it. You can go down this time. I've had enough for one day. Exploded chipmunk. What? Excuse me, sir. Come and get filled, please. Yeah. Come on, lads. Uh, look, trade room. I did not call a sodding fire again. <laughs> My house is not on fire. Will you please go away? Oh, 
was there. <laughs> Sorry, lads, as you were. This is the third time this week you're not to be right. I'm getting pretty bloody sick of it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, sir, but as you'll appreciate, we've got to take every call seriously. Now then, you've no idea who these pranksters are and they keep bringing us up. No. Presumably it's somebody I've annoyed in the past who's trying to get their own back. We've drawn up a short list of 5,000 names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, sir. Good night, you. Good night. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Meldrew. <laughs> Keeping your bowels open. Sorry? Uh, didn't see you there. Uh, the sugar frosties, actually. Yes, I wouldn't have thought you'd need a laxative in a job like that. <laughs> It's the old road, isn't it? Are you settling in now? All right. Uh, very well, thank you. Picked it up straight away. No problems of any kind. Oh, good, good. That's nice, yes. No one's said anything to you about Psycho Sam as yet, then? <laughs> Psycho Sam? No, 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 no. That's fine if they haven't. No, no, there's no point in making you a bag of nerves before you start. That's just what you don't want. In any case, I'm not sure he hasn't had his heavy goods license withdrawn. <laughs> after what happened last Friday afternoon with your predecessor? Nice, what happened last Friday afternoon? What about my predecessor? Oh, yes, it's a shame about old Bertie. Nice old chap as well. Yeah, very popular with the children. Shame about old Bertie? Who's Bertie? Look, look, what are you talking about? Anyway, I, I better scoot. You see, I've got to pop Auntie's sis down the road and control at nine. So, uh, see you about, I expect. And uh, don't go worrying about articulated lorries. You'll be absolutely fine. Wait, take it, take it. Oh, uh, bit of a to-do out here by the looks of things. Well, uh, bye-bye to you then, Mr. Meldrew. You've got a lollipop on in here, stuck inside a smoke-filled urina. <laughs> oh, shit. Meg's gone sick and I've got to do a couple of hours at the shop and then I'm seeing Jean for lunch. I haven't had a minute to think about food for tonight. Well, that's all right. I'll do the one of my specials. Oh, are you sure? I, I think there's some mince in the fridge. I'll see you later. Yes, bye. Ah, here we are. What did I tell you? My horoscope for the day. Do not, under any circumstances, go round for a meal tonight at Victor Meldrew's unless accompanied by a trained exorcist. <laughs> I would ring up and cancel, but I suppose it's a bit inconsiderate, isn't it, really? Dragging him out of his coffin in broad daylight. I <laughs> wonder what bizarre aquatic species I can expect in the groin this time. <laughs> Stingray up the rectum? <laughs> I'll just get off lightly with a couple of barnacles on the foreskin. Can you see an old dirty floor cloth by the door? Um, yep. Well, would you mind shoving it in your bloody mouth? <laughs> Very good. Mmm, <laughs> I think this is going to be one of my good ones. Now, the magic formula. Uh, two teaspoons chili powder <laughs> in a cup of water. And one half teaspoon cumin. <laughs> Harold, are you well? Come on in. Good morning, Arthur. Go and set yourselves down. I've just got to finish off a bit of cooking for tonight, and I'll be right with you. Oh, God, you need a hand with that. something, the way you carry on. They're just a normal couple, like you and me. 
trying to lead normal, everyday lives. Try wearing crucifixes. <laughs> Fresh air. Okay, Mr. Hendricks, can, can you get help? That's it. That's it. That's it. Here we go. Right. Oopsie daisy. Lean on me. That's it. Okay. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yes. Here. Maybe we should get him to the hospital ourselves. Morning, Mrs. Meldrew. Anything I can do to help at all? What's happened? Is he dead? I feel just we're ready to join him. Harold said it'd be a good 20 minutes yet. We should keep that door closed! <sighs> it's all under control. We've managed to get him out of there. And he seems to be all right. But Mr. Swaley very kindly said he'd run him off to the hospital just to be on the safe side. You're going to be late for your next shift if you don't look lively. Look, just go. Jean and I will tidy up the mess. Are you sure? Well, look, I'll speak to you later. Uh, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry about all this. Right. You ready?
Mr. Meldrew. You're still in one piece, then? <laughs> Evidently. Oh, by the way, your old gentleman, Mr. Henstridge, was fine in the end. They gave him a thorough going over in casualty. I'm just trying to get him home now in time for tea. Well, this isn't Mr. Henstridge. This is Mr. Matthews. He hasn't got a weak heart. But this is the chap your wife asked me to take down the hospital. I have to take down... Oh, where's Mr. Henstridge there? When I left him, he... Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> you don't mean he's still inside the trunk? <laughs> Could you do explain there what happened? He asked us to chain him up inside, said it escaped in 30 seconds first. After 10 minutes, it all went quiet. Then Mr. Gridley found he had lost the key, and Mr. Matthews here passed out from shock. <laughs> I told them to keep searching where I went for an ambulance. I mean, surely to goodness, someone must have... Oh, God! He's been in there now for five bloody hours! <laughs> She say, um, this one's mayonnaise, um, this one's blue cheese, and I think this one's Thousand Island. So what's this one then? I think that's an ashtray. <laughs> Looks suspiciously like pigeon droppings to me. <laughs> if you're going to keep making disgusting remarks all night, you're going to get this lot right in your face. And can you see a butter knife at all? Well, there's bound to be one around here somewhere. I wonder what he uses to cut his toenails at night. <laughs> wine harvester? Uh, hmm. You sure you won't join us for the evening? Victor's made enough chilli here to feed a regiment. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. But I think I'd better get home and call you-know-who. See how the investigation's been progressing. Yes, well, Chris comes home tomorrow and then you'll find you've been worrying yourself all over nothing at all. You'll see. Yes. Well, bye, Margaret. Talk to you soon. Yes. If you feel like ringing at any time. Oh, I will. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Right then. Sorry about that. Now, I expect Victor will be a while yet, and I've still got a couple of things to see to in the kitchen, so you just make yourselves at home. Yes, I'll just settle down and get comfortable sitting on this machete. <laughs> Spending an evening at the Munsters coming around here. <laughs> what nameless horror you're going to come across next? woman? <laughs> How you display of my ventriloquial dexterity? There's someone in the bloody trunk. <laughs> There's a body inside here. What? God. I can hear chains rattling inside. <laughs> in the name of God, what kind of a sadist is he? Here we are, darling. I'm sorry, I forgot to offer you both a drink, didn't I? Now, what would you like? I think there's some martini. I'm not sure whether Victor's left any whiskey.
Yes, I don't know. Could you put me through to the fire brigade, please? <laughs> Somebody here call us. <laughs> no reply from the war boys residence. Must be on the way. Oh, I gave Mrs. Henshridge a quick ring. Said it'd be a while before his back straightens out, but otherwise he's recovering quite well. I don't know whether this was such a good idea. I just thought if we could get the pair of them out for the evening, it might take my mind off this ridiculous thing. Ah. Oh. Sorry I'm late. Chris took the wrong turning on the new one-way system. All oh, right. So where is he parking the car? No. No, he won't be joining us. He just gave me a lift here on his way to the office to collect some things. It's all over between us, I'm afraid. We talked it all through and decided it was for the best. And as there didn't seem much point in, in prolonging the agony, he's, he's moving in with her tomorrow morning. So it was true. In the end, that woman next door but one? Oh. oh, no, no, no. Of course it wasn't. That was me just barking up the wrong tree, as usual. Who was he moving in with? That's the worst part of it all, I'm afraid. The private detective. <laughs> the private. Apparently, he spotted her after the first couple of days following him around. They got chatting. He said it was silly of them to keep taking two cars everywhere when they could both go and use. <laughs> Seems they just hit it off together straight away. Everything's gone. Just as wrong as it could have, really. <laughs> yes, it generally does. One thing you could be sure about in life, just when you think that things are never ever going to get better, they suddenly get worse. <laughs> yes. Although right now, it's hard to imagine how. They say I might as well face the truth, but I am just too long in the tooth. So I'm an OAB and we weak need, but I'm not yet quite gone to see. I may be over the hill now that I have retired. Fading away, but I'm not yet expired. Clapped out, run down, two of the same. One foot in the grave. So, on line two, we have Patrick. Good evening to you, Patrick. And what's your question for Mimsy Berkowitz? Well, it's a bit of a tricky one, but uh, put simply, my wife and I live next door to a madman. <laughs> if I tell you a few weeks ago, he put a specially trained crab up my shorts while I was asleep in the garden. And that I had to be rushed to hospital with it hanging between my legs. <laughs> As you're on a tube train, uh, you'll get some idea of the problem. What's tricky is that uh, they've invited us round to their house tomorrow for a meal to try and patch things up. I just wonder if we should risk it. It does sound a delicate one, this. But I think, on balance, I want... Something wrong with this phone? Oh, sorry, yes. It only takes incoming calls at the moment. 
They were supposed to fix it before. Is everything all right, Jean? You've been really fidgety all night. Margaret, do you mind if we go and sit down? Well, whatever is it? <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly bring myself to even talk about it. I think Chris is having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> an affair? Who is? Well, you know the woman who lives two doors along from us? lost her husband in that ear syringing accident. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago, this blew off her washing.